Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fully Charged Show, coming to you from the bucolic rolling countryside of the west of England. And I'm here with a lovely car that is rolling and bucolic in its own way. I love it. This is the new 2021 Jaguar I-Pace. Now, you might look at this if you've seen other episodes of Fully Charged or you know this vehicle, you go, well, it's not that different. And you'd be right, this is pretty similar to the one that I've driven before. There are some subtle cosmetic changes. There's a new infotainment system that is now standard across the entire JLR range. There are one or two pretty clever and very impressive innovations that this car's got. Um, but essentially, it's still the same car. But what it's reminded me of is how good this car is. I haven't driven one for a long time. It is a, it is a really lovely car to drive. It's not cheap. It's, it's a perfect replacement for a large SUV. If you're a family that wants a big SUV or if you're someone that thinks it's important to have a big SUV, I might have a rant about SUVs. I'll try and be polite about it. But this car is really impressive. So I'm going to drive it uh, quite a long way to a new charging hub that's just opened up, uh, which has been installed by Ecotricity and uh, GridServe two of the big uh, uh, electric vehicle charging companies in the UK. And I, I, we want to use it because it literally just opened. And I think this is what we're looking at is the future of uh, long distance travel uh, electric charging. So it's relevant to everyone outside the UK, but obviously UK electric car drivers are going to literally get excited about it because it really does make a big difference. So Jag Eye Pace, new chargers, let's go for a drive. Don't forget our great EV giveaway. Subscribe and enter for the chance to win one of several electrifying prizes, including one of four electric cars. Oh, for goodness sake. I mean, you know, during lockdown, this was quiet. Get out on the road. I'll have to accelerate like a demon. Woo! Thankfully, I'm in an eye pace. <laughs> okay, the Jaguar eye pace. Now, I reviewed this car in 2018, and back then, one, I was blown away by it. It was so exciting because it was one of the first kind of high end, uh, built from the ground up, designed as an electric car from the ground up by a legacy automaker, Jaguar part of Jaguar Land Rover, uh, really competent, capable, proper competition, proper electric car. You know, really, it was really the first one. And at, well, at the time it came out, the, the only competition it really had was the Tesla Model X, which was out by 2018. This was much cheaper. It was a bit smaller, uh, but it was very, very capable. All wheel drive, uh, big battery, long range, really impressive. But of course, since then, a load of other cars of similar size, scale, expense, uh, build quality have come out. The Audi e-tron, the Mustang Mach-E, the uh, Volvo, uh, Volvo XE40, the Mercedes EQC. All of those have come out in that intervening period. And they're all within, you know, they're within the expensive bracket where rich people who can afford to buy expensive cars and do could get something you know of an equivalent scale you know this one i love the sh the look of this car i love the shape of it i love driving it it's just it's been a re real refreshing reminder of just how brilliantly engineered this car is of how good the road holding is of how how easy it is to drive so this has got a 90 kilowatt hour battery uh the 0 to 60 is i don't know sort of around four seconds it's it's very pokey if you want it to be uh, uh about 220 to 260 miles of realistic plausible range 220 in the winter 260 in the summer 50 250 i'm going to say uh from, from, this is from the experience of driving it and uh it cost about it, it's from about sixty five thousand pounds i would classify that as expensive this is an expensive car but what you get for that money is phenomenal i mean there's, this is a more expensive version i'd say this one is closer to seventy thousand pounds i mean they are ridiculously well built they're beautiful i mean the road holding i could go around this roundabout now 50 miles an hour faster and this car would stay on the road and cope with it i wouldn't i'd be freaking out and screaming car sales collapsed in 2020 for diesel for petrol for hybrids absolutely collapsed 
for electric cars, they went up. So in 2020, 4% of all new car purchases were electric. That might not sound like much, but let me tell you, the year before, it was less than 1%. So a massive increase, genuinely massive, huge increase globally. We're not talking about the EU or the UK or the US. This is around the world. Uh, in, the U- in the UK, it was 14, 1.4%. That is unimaginable. And it's expected to rise by the figures that they're getting at the moment. It's expected to go up to maybe 30% this year. Really proper Norwegian levels of electric car purchases. All that is good news, good story. That's exactly what Fully Charged is all about, demonstrating the positivity and the optimism in that. But I cannot, cannot gloss over the very, very painfully obvious total sales of all new cars, not second-hand, not third-hand, new, out of the factory, brand spanking new. Out of that, 43% of new car sales were SUVs. Petrol and diesel SUVs, very important, not electric. Petrol and diesel SUVs, really, really depressing. That is what human beings who are rich, because it, let's, let's face it, who can buy a brand new petrol or diesel SUV? You've got to be rich. This is how it should be. This is what it's meant to be like. This is one of the, it's a brand new. These charges have literally been in a couple of days. Let's have a look how this baby works. Oh, it's a nice thick cable. There we go. So you plug it in. Plug detected, please pay. So that is amazing. I, I just want to explain this to viewers outside the UK. So for the last 10 years, there's been a network of chargers on the motorways in the UK that have been, let's say overall, less than 100% reliable. They're actually very good for Chadamo. They've always worked for Chadamo because that's the first electric cars that came out used Chadamo. This is the new, just installed uh, electric highway. This is Ecotricity, which was the company that originally put on all the chargers, the most in- the amazing foresight they showed. But they have now gone into partnership with GridServe. We've done a show about GridServe's first purpose-built charging hub. So Ecotricity and GridServe are now putting in these charges in every single motorway services, highway rest stop, if you like, in the UK. And they are so it's such a relief they are so easy to use you walk up to it you saw what i did you plug the car in you tap your card your bank card basically not a special club card or anything like that. your bank card on there it starts charging it's charging this car at 72 kilowatts which is uh, about uh, 150 miles every half an hour so you know give it a 20 minutes charging and you can carry on on your way so it's fast it's really easy to use it's, it's more expensive than you'd pay for electricity at home, but not that much. What do they charge? 30 pence a kilowatt hour. It's clearly marked on the sign. This is such a big breakthrough. This is what we need for mass adoption of electric vehicles. So the other thing is, there's not just two. Often in, uh, when they first got, came out, these charges, there was like one or two at a motorway service station like this. Here, there's 13 of these, and there is another, well, I don't even know how many, another 10, 15 Tesla chargers. Now, it's, it's, look at that, there's wonderful equivalents. Doesn't matter what you're driving. If you're driving a Tesla, you can go down your la di da Tesla end. But if you're driving any other electric car, you can come and charge them here. All those ones down there with the blue handles, they, that is Chadamo. That's for either Japanese, Japanese makes so older cars, Nissan Leafs, Mitsubishis, uh, some Hondas use that. So that's slightly older. But this car uses CCS, which is what 99% of cars are using now and will use in future. So, I mean, the Jaguar, the software is the, always the problem with, you know, uh, legacy car makers. But this is pretty good, I think. So the, the sat-nav is, is very good, uh, uh, you know, all the different bits you can do. So your phone, you know, you can set up your phone and that you can use your phone. That was very easy to do. It does all that very simply. Vehicle preconditioning, so all your timers, those are good. Those are really useful things to have. Vehicle preconditioning off, but if you put it on, 
you can set it so that it starts heating the car up in the morning before you drive if it's a cold day, etc., etc. Uh, no, yes, it's not. It's not super intuitive. You kind of go through a few steps all the time. Um, media is so it's obviously got. You can use Apple CarPlay and uh, Android Auto and all those things. You've got all your radio stations there. You've got your favourites. You've got your player. You can use the phone. So that is, you know, all pretty understandable. And you can also set it up for your to f- suit you. You can have all the settings pre-done when you first get the car. The other thing I really do like is these. So these are the, the heating and cooling knobs, and they're physical knobs. And they're really good. And if you push it, it does different things. So that's the seat heater for the passenger seat. So that goes up, down. But with here's one of the things that was a bit shocking. I accidentally put my seat, I'll do it now, onto cold. That that makes your bottom and your back very, very cold indeed. It's That's doing it now. There's icy cold wind blowing out in between my legs. I found that a little bit unpleasant. Then the, the, these are the drive buttons, park, reverse neutral and drive that's very simple this is where you can change the vehicle setting so you can set it to sport and to eco comfort mode they call it and eco which is like limited your acceleration and top speed um that's your off-road settings for your traction control Oof. and here are the buttons which allow you to raise the vehicle or lower it if you're driving on off off-road if you're on rough ground but now there's one thing that just got me really really excited but i noticed that so those are the The car cameras. Look at that! Look at that! You're getting a view as though you've got a camera out the back. And that is really accurate for your surroundings. And you can change that view. Look at that! That is nice. So that's the view out the back. So say you've got all mud on that and dust, which you always do. I'm always cleaning the cameras on the backs of cars. Not on the Jag, you don't. You just press that button. Oh, look at that! Look at that! You're just washing it! That is genius! That is genius. That is such a simple thing. I, I, I mean, technologically, it's a very small thing. It's a little pump, a little tank of water, and it just cleans up. That lens is so, you know, for the people who are lucky enough to have cars with reversing cameras, which are brilliant, really help, all they do is get filthy. So every time you get in the car, you've got to wipe it off or get a cloth and wash it. You know, they always get, they just get all the muck on the road. And the Jag, that's brilliant. I've not seen that in any other car. So the whole infotainment system is new and it's what's used in you know, Jaguar Land Rover's cars. So it's not unique to the I-Pace. But it, I've got to say, it is really, really, that is very, very impressive. The dash that's right in front of me is, is supremely adequate. It's not amazing. Uh, it gives you, I mean, I like the trip auto summary. I like that sort of information. But there's, you can, you know, set it up in different ways. But it's, it, it doesn't give you a lot of information. It's very, very basic it's got also got the thing that I I know is a really difficult one, which is the uh, how do you judge uh, what your fuel of efficiency is? And we're used to in in the United States and in the UK we're, and Australia for sure we're used to miles to the gallon, which you could also say how many kilometres can you do to the liter? You could do that, but in Europe it's often how many how many uh, litres do you use to go 100 kilometres, which I find the most annoying, baffling measurement system. I want to know how many miles I go to one kilowatt hour. And so this uses kilowatt hours per 100 miles, which is really hard to, to, to know what it does. But all I know is this car uses two and a half to three kilo, uh, miles to the kilowatt hour. Steering wheel, I like, very simple, very clear to use. Uh, adaptive cruise control here, lane assist, all these little buttons. There's a speed limiter, which is not a bad idea in a car like this because I have noticed it's extremely easy to go over the speed limit without meaning to because it just goes and it sails along and you're not kind of feeling the kind of aggression of it. It just, it just goes. So it's a very smooth car. Um, you know, all the, it's very high quality. Everything is finished to a very high quality level. Uh, one of my failings shows how dumb I am. I was looking for some sort of volume control here, and there is some on here, but this is this. It's, it's a knob, and it's very easy to use. That's on, that's off. Turn it on, turn it off, turn it up, volume up, volume down. That is quite nice. Just have a knob. I like that. Now, rear view mirror. This is awesome. This is new. This was not on the old iPace that I drove before. So that is a mirror. That's a rear view mirror. And I could actually use it exactly as a rear view mirror. It works as a mirror. I can adjust it so that I can see out the back. But 
but here we go. I pull that, which would normally be the anti-glare anti thing. That becomes a screen. Now, you could look at that and go, oh, I'm not sure I like that. I'm not sure that works. It's much better than a mirror. It's so much better. I really love this. this is a, and this is so much better than wing mirror cameras which have never quite worked for me this really works this is better so you can adjust it now i can adjust it um the, the brightness of it so you can turn the brightness down like that that's easy and you can adjust the, the tippiness you can go up you go down up and down a bit so it's not a huge amount but that is really good i really really like that So when we got here, it was a beautiful sunny day. It's now about to pour with rain, so I'm going to stop charging. I've got enough charge. All I have to do is go up, press this button. I'm hoping this is right. And then return plug. And I've had 51 kilowatt hours of... Oh, and I know on a Jag I pace you press that button. There you go. Put that back in there. That is a water-cooled hose, and it goes zig, 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 zig as you're charging. <laughs> but that's it. It's all done. New I pace, fabulous rear washer of the camera that's for me the most important thing i've ever seen in my life that is up there with uh, with a with a filling your washer fluid outside the bonnet anyway won't go on about that uh, please do have a look at the patreon link beneath this this uh, this episode because we've actually met while well, we've been here two people who support us on patreon it's really important really helps us keep going uh do subscribe for fully charge you know all the normal stuff and um, as always if you have been thank you for watching